we will calculate the center of mass of a half a disk. We break the disk into rings with radius r, mass dm, and area da, and we will use the result for the center of mass of a half a ring. Due to symmetry, the x position of the center of mass of those rings will be zero, and we need to consider only the y position of the center of mass which was equal to 2r over pi, where r was the radius of the ring. And so the vertical position of the center of mass of that half a disk will be equal to the integral of dm over m times the vertical position of the center of mass of each of those rings. Or integral of dm over m, 2r over pi. We introduce the surface density as the mass per unit area, sigma equal to dm over dA, and we can write for the mass of the ring dm equal to sigma dA. The question now is, what is the area of such a ring? We can figure out the area of this ring if we picture it as the difference between a circle with a radius r plus dr and another circle with a radius r. So we will write for the area of the whole ring pi r plus dr squared minus pi r squared. Opening the parenthesis, the terms become pi r squared plus 2 pi r dr plus pi dr squared minus pi r squared. We cancel the pi r squared terms, and of the two remaining terms, we know that the dr squared term is much, much smaller than the 2 pi r dr, and so we neglect it. The area of a ring, then, is simply equal to 2 pi r dr. For our case, we actually have half a ring, and so we will have to consider only half of this value. Going back to the mass of the ring equals to sigma dA, we write now that it is equal to sigma pi r dr. Remember, it's half of our result for the whole ring. For a uniform object, the surface density is equal also to the average surface density, which is the total mass over the total area of the object. For the disk, the area is 1 half pi r squared. After cancelling pi and rearranging the terms, we finally see that the mass of half a ring will be equal to the mass of that half a disk divided by the radius squared multiplied by 2 r dr, where a little r is the radius of the ring. With that expression, we go back to the integral for the vertical position of the center of mass of the half a, di half a, half a disk. Integral of dm over the mass of the disk to r, the radius of a ring, over pi. Replacing dm, we get 1 over m, m over r squared, 2 r dr, times 2r over pi, cancelling the mass of the disk and rearranging the terms. We see that the vertical position of the center of mass of the half a disk will be given by the integral 4 over pi r squared, the radius of the disk, times the radius of the individual rings, little r squared dr. If we take the constants out, we will have to solve the integral of r squared dr with limits from 0 corresponding to the smallest ring and big R, the radius of the disk, that is the largest ring. The value of that integral is simply r cubed over 3, so the overall expression for the center of mass along the y-axis of the disk becomes 4 over pi r squared times little r cubed over r evaluated at the limits 0 and r. That gives us 4 over 3 pi the radius of the disk squared times r cubed minus 0 or the final expression for the vertical position of the center of mass of a half a disk is 4 over 3 pi times r.